Welcome to this video. Hermitcraft 6 got to an end and during the season I kept thinking Sahara should be able to be built more efficient. So I made a goal for myself to build Sahara in a single chunk. And there we have it. Sahara. These fences here are the junk border, so let's enter it. The number of items represents the current stock levels. To purchase, press Q on an item you want to buy. Let's order some concrete. I want a little red, I want some orange, and I want some yellow. And I throw a potato in there instead. Oops. Now we know all orders at Sahara take a little while, which have fancy lights to entertain you. However, since the warehouse is below the shop, we don't have a reason for fancy lights anymore. Instead, our order arrives in about 10 seconds. Let's get the goods. The same as Sahara, the Shilka box gets removed and replaced. Buy the next one when it's empty. Now let's get our uh, receipts. And as you can see, our baked potato is in there. It didn't break the system, it just got returned to us instead. Handy if you drop your pickaxe in the system by accident. The payment chest is a simple trap chest, so the payment disappears when we close it. And this is the system in action. Now before I go to a block by block tutorial, let's quickly show you what's happening on the other side of the wall. So let's order some items. The dropper in the back puts the orders out to the water stream. The orders go over the item sorters and get sorted in. This triggers the droppers which push out the receipt and the shulker with the items. The shulker and receipt now fall down the tube, fall into a hopper and get pushed up the next tube. They now arrive upstairs where they go into hoppers again. The receipt goes in a chest and the shulker with items gets delivered. Now let's take a quick look at the back. At the back you have the incoming ordered items, you have your empty shulkers, you have the receipts and you have the payments. They all come here into this chest. There are three different hopper lines and item lines. So you can separate them out if you want into different chests. Then here you have your shulkers, which will end up in a dispenser over here. And then here there will be the receipts. You don't have to fill those a lot. Luckily, um, but you will have to remove a block if you fill them. Since not everyone watches the block by block tutorial, some small things if you are planning to leave. There's a world download in the description, like down there. Please subscribe to my channel and like this video. And in the description, there's also a link to a tweet to the architects themselves, so they hopefully see what I created. Please head over there and like and retweet it, so there's a bigger chance of them seeing it. Thank you. A small note. This tutorial is unfortunately only for the Java edition of the game. Everything in this tutorial works fine in the Bedrock edition of the game, except for the Shulka dispensing system where the order comes in. Unfortunately, currently in Bedrock, there does not seem to be a way to make this work 100% of the time, and sometimes an empty Shulka gets lost. So I've decided to only make this for Java. Bedrock, I promise you get attention next time, and. If this ever works, I'll update the tutorial. Starting with the block by block tutorial, let me explain the color scheme that I'm using. You can use any blocks for all of these as long as it's a full solid block. Red concrete is used for blocks that hold redstone components or transmit power themselves. Orange and glass is used for building blocks that are required for the system to work. The glass is just so it's easy to see inside of the system. Green blocks are entirely optional. They are used to walk on and reach components and to place ladders, for example. The first thing we're going to do is make a few holes at the right place. These will be for the items. The orders will go down here, and the receipt will come up here. And the chokers will come up here. For the orders, we will need a dropper on a clock. We're doing a 4 tick delay on both repeaters. And now we can start on the order module.
Above the order module, you can only place transparent blocks, like for example glowstone, otherwise the chest won't open. To make it a little bit nicer, we're going to hide the hoppers with a little bit of carpet. Now every time we throw items in here or from all these chests, we can press Q. This will throw the item out and the dropper will then throw them down. From the dropper we will need to go 5 down and then a couple of blocks to the side. This will be the location of the water stream, so the other blocks can go up till here. This will be on the floor. Now from the bottom we place a temporary block here and a temporary block here. We'll need to have a hopper facing that side and a hopper facing that side. We place a comparator here. We're going to make an item filter. Now this item filter is originally made by Impulse SV and I'm also going to link that tutorial in the description. After the item filter, we will need a repeater. The repeater goes into a block, then we have another repeater going into a block again. Below that there will be two droppers, these will be for the items. On this side we will place a hopper with a chest like this. Now we will need to repeat this pattern seven more times. Now this model is almost complete. The items will come into here and go over the hoppers and eventually fall down if they didn't get a slot. So we can place some water here. So we'll make sure items go over. Now in all these hoppers we will need to place some filter items. I use eggs most of the times since eggs have a smaller stack size which will mean you will need less of the it uh, order items in this system. The items from the order chest will end up in this hopper and we will need to have that towards a single location. So we're going to make a hopper line that will end up going to here. Now if you're on a server and you want to be friendly, hoppers cause a little bit of lag due to the checking or if there's items above them. To prevent that, you can place droppers. The droppers will not do anything, but they will prevent a little bit of lag on a server, or even in your own world. Now whenever an order item comes in, it goes into the right hopper, which will then trigger a repeater, which will trigger both droppers. The item then needs to go to the back. For that we're going to use ice tracks for the items which we will need to cover up. Now on this side we're going to place water inside, on both sides, and block it off so it only flows towards this end. Now every item which gets dropped into here will end up over here. And over here we're going to make a drop shoot. The items will go all the way down and we'll catch them there later. So now here we're going to go 4 blocks down, 
and we need to place a hopper again. This will be the start of the next module. Now this will be an exact copy of this. So we're gonna start with 8 building blocks. And then we're gonna place comparators over here. We can then place all the hoppers. And now we need to do the same. However, we're now going to continue this line. Over here and place all the... All the hoppers into it. And to prevent lag, we're again going to place droppers on all of these. Since this will be the water stream, I will place the water here. Now you will see that this hole lights up perfectly with this one. This means you can continue this set of modules. Again and again and again, all the way until you're, well, at build height. Now we just need to cover these up. And that is another one repaired. I'm now going to copy this design over to here. to get the eyes in again. This time it's a little bit different. But that will explain itself pretty soon. Now as you see the ice is one backwards. That is due to the system going from this way to here to here. So the solution for that is to pull this one back, add another ice here. Now we're going to cover it up. We're going to place the water and we will see that the water is flowing out from this side. Which we can fix. with an open oak fence kit. We can then continue this all the way over here. This will make sure all the items will fall into the tube. We now have one module done. And the module is 16 items. Now if you want more, you need to build this all again. So I'm going to do that for you so you know how to connect it up. I'm going to go down 4 this time. 5 actually. 
and the new water stream will be here. This is one lower than the other, and that is due to this little thing sticking out. From here we're going to do exactly the same, so of course that's going to be a time lapse. We've done all the models for 32 items, now it's time to start the bottom. What we need to do is here, we're going to go down a little bit. This is where our receipts and shulkers come in. The receipts will come down this tube, the shulkers with items will come down this tube. We need to push them up again, so for that going to place a dropper here. We are hopper running into this. This catches all the items. And now we're going to place some soul sand here. Cover it up. And now we need to do the redstone so the dropper automatically empties. Redstone is looking quite simple. It's just a clock, as we've seen before. It's just that this one does not have a bigger delay. So whenever an item is in here now, this will run as a clock. Now we need to make sure actually triggers the dropper as well. Which it will do like this. Now wherever our item is in here, it will all shoot out. Now of course there will be a water stream here which will move the items all up perfectly in the holes we placed earlier. I'm going to copy this design over here. And let's test it again with a few items. Now we're going to build up this a little bit so we can add the water streams already. The next thing we're going to do is that the items that didn't go into the system actually get returned to the user. So we're going to add a water stream here. Small correction here. This one needs to go one back. The last shoot we need to make is for the items that have been ordered. I'm going to continue this dropper line over here. Gonna make it one lower than the ice. So we'll go into a dropper over here. You will also be one of these water streams, including the timer again. The 
timer needs to be a little bit different. Because otherwise it doesn't fit in a single chunk. Parrots are over there. Peter over here. And we're also going to test this one. Now we're going to continue these tubes almost all the way to the top. This one will, will be connected to over there. This one will stop a little bit earlier. shoots done we need to fill them with water. The best way to do this is to knock out the bottom and place kelp in there. So let's just do that. Letting water fall down. And jumping in and placing kelp all the way to the top. I'm going to do the same with the two other tubes. Now we have the kelp in, so we're going to the bottom. We're gonna replace the dirt and soul sand. It will destroy all the kelp in the tube and it will all flow upwards. And here's all kelp. Now we're gonna work on the shilka dispenser. Now I've already measured it out, the, um, if you want the same compact design, there needs to be 7 blocks between this hole and the order module. However, the Shulka dispenser works with an input and output chest, so you're free to build it wherever you want, just not too close to the rest. From the order module, the place where the shilko will be placed, we're going to go to the side and then down. This is where the empty shilkos will go. Now behind it we of course need the dispenser. And the dispenser is connected with hoppers. Now above it, we need to place a sticky piston. This will destroy the shulker. Now on this side, we will need a building block. Then we want to transfer the redstone signal. This will be the check for when the shulker is empty. We also need an output on the dispenser to detect when a new shulker comes in. We're going to do that with observers. Now 
connecting that like this. And here we need a repeater. And then one lower. We need a repeater as well. But this time, one two ticks. I'm gonna place a block here. Now the only thing we still need to do is add a little line towards the hopper. Now we will place some blocks around the dispenser to make sure that the shulker cannot escape when it gets removed. Now of course we need to test the system first. So let's see. We have the shulker here. Now when you're checking out this, please also check that still the same amount of items is in here. There are short time times where this hopper needs to be unlocked for this shulker to go in there. So if you don't have the exact timings everywhere, you could lose one item in your own hopper line every time. Remove it. That's all fine. So now we're going to do it the three at the same time. And it's all working. Now one shulker will stay stuck here. That, that's just how the system works. The rest of the shulkers will end up here. We're going to make a nice spot for them later in the tutorial. Now we're going to do one more thing and that is actually hook up this line over here. Now we need to make sure that the hopper is coming up will not shoot out of the tube and for that we're gonna just block it off over there and now all the shulkers that will come up will go into this hopper and go into this system so the user can take their order now we're gonna make the lines for the receipts and the payments so I'm just gonna make the holes first so we know where they will be and this one is gonna be pretty easy we're going to have a chest for the receipts and a trap chest for the payments. And we're going to place the glowstone again above them. And now we need to hook up this to this line over here. This is where the receipts and the random items that have been thrown in the system will end up. Let's adjust this color over here. And now the receipts will end up in here. Now this one will be pretty easy. The payment chest, and it's just a hopper coming down. So we now have one line for the shulkers, and we have one for the payment. And over here, <laughs> there is the line for the ordered items. That is the items you have in this chest after they've gone through the system. One of the last things you need to do is to make a chest where all the empty shulkers the payments and the receipts and the ordered items come in so we're going to increase the height of this we're going to put some ice in there
Now we need to create a hope line towards one chest. I'm gonna place that around here. And now we decide one of our buckets we complete this. We can now hook up the other hoppers. Now if you want to keep these separate you can, because you have three different lines. But for the tutorial I'm not going to do that. Oops, there's the shulkas in there, of course. And that is the system done. We now need to fill up all the filters. That's these hoppers here. And then the droppers for the receipts and the shulkers for the items. That's gonna take a while. I've filled up the whole system. Um, just a quick overview again. Um, first you fill it up with the item that goes into the order chest. Um, if you have any places where you don't want an item yet, you can just add X in there. Accidentally ordered something while doing that, uh, but just fill it up to one. Now, over here are the receipts. I've completely filled it so I don't have to fill it a lot since you do have to remove a block to fill them. However, in the output chest, you know exactly how much receipts you've already used, so that's not a big problem. This is full with chokers with the items. You have quite large chests to fill, <laughs> so I don't think you'll run out pretty fa pretty fast. So let's order some items. I've made a little walkway here to make it a little bit easier. I'm gonna do green and pink. I've also added the other one, so let's add grey, light blue. Now you see that the items just go across all the uppers. Got a pink, got a green, got a light blue, and a green. And of course, we have the receipts here. And we can pay here. Let's grab some diamonds. There we go. Now, these hopper lines you can place however you want. It's just an input and output hopper line, so you can adjust a little bit on how you're gonna structure your shop. It's the same with the receipt hopper line, and well, the payment chest is also just going down. So, this is the system complete. There's, of course, a world download in the description, which, well, is literally this world, so it complete, it has both builds. I hope you like this tutorial, this is the first time I've done a redstone tutorial and it's also, well, it's quite a large system I've built here. So I hope you liked it, if you have any tips or anything, any advice, please tell me in the comments. Uh, it really helped me to make my next tutorial a little bit better. Um, also if you like it, please subscribe. And the last thing I'm going to say, in the description there's a link to a tweet. Um, it's a tweet towards the architects in the hope they see this tutorial. If you could give that a like and a retweet so it's well maybe they'll see it that would be really really awesome thank you very much for watching and well see you next time